Hi everyone, welcome to The Shack. This is part two of the uncomfortable truth about ham radio uh, equipment specifications and how the manufacturers um, uh, publish them, communicate them, etc. So, um, so the original video that I posted on this subject became the fastest growing most watched video in the history of Oxford Shortwave Log, which is coming up for seven years this summer. Um, it's surpassed 30,000 views in about two and a half weeks. Um, and in comparison, uh, the next most watched video on the channel was a recording of UVB 76, um, the buzzer. Uh, and I posted that basically two years ago. So you can see how um, interest in this video um, has it sort of accelerated the number of views and um, when I say most popular I think for most people it's been popular um, but it's also been quite polarizing um, there's a group of people that basically found it very interesting there's a group of people that basically used it as evidence to completely rubbish MFJ products and how they're specified um, and then there's a group of people who remain open-minded um, and then there are some trolls. Um, it's interesting, actually. I don't know who the trolls are. Um, I suppose for 30,000 odd views, maybe half a dozen idiots um, isn't actually too bad a sort of representation um, of that sort of overall demographic. Um, but um, anyway, the trolls, um, I either had a bit of fun with them um, or just basically blocked them from the channel. So um, it just made it hard work for them, really. But um, it certainly polarised opinion and it seemed to bring out as I said, some very sort of strong views. Um, and I came to the conclusion, as I think I mentioned in another video, that there aren't that many people in this, uh, involved in this hobby who really, really know what they're doing and understand what they're doing. You know, I think a lot a lot do, but there's a lot that don't. But of, the, of those that don't, and maybe I'm one of them, there's... Um, there's a lot that actually but think they do, so that a lot of voodoo engineering and sort of conspiracy theories came out as regards why the audio um, was clipping on the Kenwood 990 when I was using it on top band through the MFJ um, 948 as compared to the Kenwood TS480, um, which where there was no problem whatsoever. Um, everybody sort of jumped on the bandwagon and said, well, it's probably the MFJ or Clint, you don't know what you're doing, etc., etc." which, you know, I don't mind. I'm here to be uh, shot down. Um, and then there were those that were basically going back to sort of first principles well it doesn't mean anything unless you test it on a dummy load now the output on the Kenwood has been tested on a dummy load because I got the guy to do it at Moonraker before I bought it so that's been done obviously not not on the 480 um so um I'm quite happy because just the advertising revenue alone paid for um uh will, will keep me in batteries for my portable for the next five years but um it in the end, there's there's two issues. There's two potential issues here. Um, uh, one is that the output power of the 990 at 200 watts is actually greater than the output power of the 480 when that says it's putting out 200 watts. Um, so that's one potential issue. So the way that Kenwood specify their products, but or the issue is simply that the um, MFJ uh, 948 cannot actually handle amount of power it says it can um, because obviously it's rated at 300 watts so um, let's try and remove one of those variables um, by doing uh, something um, that was recommended um, to me by several people watching the video um, but was obviously but of course is also obvious and that is to basically put a dummy load on the back of both rigs um, and um, which gives you a perfect input impedance of 50 ohms and look at the look at the output power and compare them now i don't have a, a separate power meter um, but i can use the forward power meter on one of my on the mfj in question um, and putting the power into a into a dummy load uh, i can compare the forward power needle of the uh, mfj with the 990 as uh, to the 480 um, and see if there's any delta, if there's any difference in how much power it's putting out. So I'm not, this isn't a measure of, this isn't collecting empirical data, a measure of the actual output of both rigs, because I need something uh, that's um, uh, been properly calibrated, etc. Uh, this is co a comparison of the power output of the TS990 versus the TS480HX. And, and then at least then if there is if so if the 990 is putting out more power then that 
could be that, that is probably the reason why um, the uh, MFJ is struggling um, and would implicate the MFJ as well. Um, whereas if both wigs are putting out the same amount of power, then Kenwood are in the clear, and it looks like it might be it, it, it is indeed an issue with the MFJ now. I don't have a 50 ohm dummy load that can handle, like one of these oil can things, that can handle an average power of 200 watts. And I'm certainly not going to spend several hundred pounds buying one just to do this video, although I think longer term it would be useful to have one. However, what I do have is a 30 dB attenuator, which is also probably not rated at 200 watts average power but will certainly be okay uh, for a few seconds while I crank the power up to 200 watts. So the 30 dBs linear power attenuation is a factor of 1000 so 200 in one end will give you about 0.2 watts at the other end and um, what we do have a lot of are these uh, 50 ohm stops which are actually so this is a 50T002 terminator 50 ohm termination rated at 1 watt. So that should be no bother because it should only be seeing about 0.2 watts via this um, 30 uh, dB attenuator. So I'm gonna attach this to the back of the MFJ, um, which fortunately has a separate um, BNC connector, well actually PL259 connector, for specifically for a 50 ohm dummy load. So we're gonna put that in. So we've got a dummy load in there. Um, we've got the MFJ set to bypass uh, our external dummy load. I've got the rig uh, on FM to give me a carrier. I've got it on top band, and I'm going to um, I'm going to start transmitting. I'm going to turn the power up to 200 watts, and I'm going to read the forward power needle uh, on the MFJ and see uh, what the, the forward power reading is when the rig is at 200 watts, and then we're going to repeat the whole thing for the 480. So uh, let's give that a go. So we, I've got at the moment. I've got it set at five watts. So there you go, and you you can probably you may be able to see the needle, but um, I'll uh, I'll provide the narrative. So five watts on FM is reading actually ten watts forward power on the MFJ. So um, let's turn the power up. Fifty watts, one hundred is reading ninety five. So it's pretty accurate actually. One hundred and fifty on the forward power is reading one hundred and thirty five. I'm um, going all the way right. The MF so the Kenwood 990 is now reading 200 watts and the reading, a forward power needle um, on the MFJ is just very, very slightly, uh, well actually it's probably spot on, 200 and it's actually reading 225. Um, there's a little bit of parallax error but give or take 225 watts forward power. So there you go. So 200 watts on the Kenwood uh, reading... Uh, 225 watts forward power on the MFJ. So I wonder if that's the issue. Um, 200 watts on the Kenwood is actually putting out 225 or whether it's just literally error in the reading of the MFJ. Now, analog, these analog meters can have up to, I think, 10% error. Um, so, you know, it could be that it's just a, a, a give or take 10% error uh, and the 200 watts output on from the rig is, is a real 200 watts. But we won't really know until um, we... Uh, compare that with the TS488HX. So I'm disconnecting the Kenwood uh, 990 and I'm connecting, by the way, I've tested both jump leads, um, well, patch leads, whatever you want to call them, um, buzz them out for continuity and isolation. Everything's perfect. Um, right, so let's um, switch on the 480. Power. Let's turn the power down. Right. Okay. So same deal. FM top band um, gives a carrier, um, and um, we're going to look at the forward power needle on the MFJ, and let's see um, what happens. Now, I guess if any of you were betting people, uh, you'd be betting well. When you wind up the power on the on the 480, it's going to be less than the 990. So, and that's then going to be explain why um, the audio on the 990 um, was clipping via the MFJ because uh, I'm not uh, uh, I'm not on the 480 because the 480 was actually putting out less power. But let's see. So let's start transmitting. So 10 watts uh, power um, as indicated on the radio. 
is actually indicating 15 watts forward power on the MFJ. So I'm just going to wind it up. Okay, now 50 watts, 100 watts, 150, 200. The radio is saying, suggesting 191. So now the radio is at 200 watts and the needle is very slightly above 225 watts. So according to the MFJ, the 480 is actually putting out very slightly more power, only a tiny amount, but very, very slightly more power, forward power um, than the uh, 990. So there you go. I wasn't expecting that. So according to the MFJ, which a lot of you don't trust anyway, um, but as a direct comparison, the um, the TS990 is putting out at 200 watts indicated on the rig, um, is indicating just spot on with a very, very tiny uh, amount, just under 225 watts. And the uh, TS488HX is indicating very slightly above 225 watts. So there you go. So I think that says the power output of these two rigs within a smidgen is the same. Um, there may be other issues, of course. At the end of the day, I'm, I'm doing this on FM um, and into a dummy load, which hopefully isn't getting too warm. No, not really. Um, so, yeah, what can you say? Um, the, the, well, I think what it says, well, it says this, it says that Kenwood specify their radios um, correctly because both of these rigs, um, when they're indicating 200 watts, are putting out within the error of an analog meter um, exactly the same power, which is what you'd expect from an excellent manufacturer such as Kenwood. What does it say about MFJ? Well, I don't know really because it, I suppose at the end of the day... Um, it, the, the MFJ works perfectly on top band, um, on lower side, you know, lower side band at 200 watts with the uh, with the 480. So, um, but doesn't, but clips the audio with the with the uh, TS 990. So there is obviously another issue there. But um, but there you go. In terms of the absolute power these radios are putting out, it's exactly the same. So uh, one thing's for sure is that Kenwood uh, Kenwood's name is in the clear as far as I'm concerned. So so there you go. I thought that would be interesting, um, and it turned out to be very interesting. Um, obviously, potentially more work to do. Um, I'm interested to find out exactly what is causing this audio clipping uh, above 120 watts on sideband, on, with, in, in, on top band with a 990, um, and uh, various um, p potential reasons have been forwarded. Um, but um, the obvious one, of course, was are both rigs putting out the same amount of power? And they actually are. And um, if that MFJ forward power needle is to be believed, the uh, 480 is actually putting out very slightly more. But, um, you know, it might be that, uh, um, you know, I've got the processor on with the 480. I'm not, I, can't, I don't think that would make any difference on FM, but um, maybe it would. Who knows? Um, I think I had the processor on with the uh, with with the 990 anyway but um you know the bottom line is is that you know to within the uh, w the, the 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 width of the um of the uh of the marking on the scale on the MFJ the output's the same so uh, so there you go there's certainly no fault with um either rig that's for sure so uh yeah let me uh, have your comments but um as far as Kenwood's concerned I think they're in the clear so um uh, I hope that uh, you, you guys found that interesting. Um, I'm sure someone will come back and say, "Wow, well, you really shouldn't trust the, uh, the the forward power meter on the uh, MFJ, etc., etc. Might you find junk and all this stuff?" But uh, I think for the purposes of comparing two rigs, it's absolutely the right thing to do. So, so there you go. Anyway, please send me your comments, and um, uh, and I'll be very interested to read them. Have a good day, everyone. Seventy three.